So without further ado, hello, Insaf. Hi, Eduardo. Thank you for inviting me. I'm really pleased and happy to be here with you. Very excited to have you on. Thank you for your time. And I am just going to jump right into these questions. Okay. So, uh, Insaf, uh, introduce yourself to everyone. Tell us who you are, where you're from, and what is your background? Okay. I'm uh, Insaf Nouri, and I'm from Casablanca, Morocco. I'm a chemical and a process engineer, and I'm uh, preparing for my PhD in uh, renewable energies. And uh, for those who don't know me, I'm a decret representative in uh, the Arabic world. <laughs> awesome. So how did you become passionate about technology? Okay. Uh, I've uh, always been uh, passionate about uh, technology since my studies, because uh, in my opinion, when Techno when technology is used in the right way, it uh, will have the ability to impact uh, people and the lives around us at a level and uh, at a scale that will uh, change uh, a lot of things uh, around us into better, into a better world. Yes. Um, and how did you first hear about Decred and how did you get involved? So, uh, for my journey with the cryptocurrency and uh, and Decred, I've uh, started my journey with Decred uh, and the cryptocurrency back in uh, April 2017. That was uh, the first time that I've heard about uh, Bitcoin and the cryptocurrencies. And from that time, I've uh, I've started uh, researching online for. Uh, what is uh, this technology behind the cryptocurrencies and Bitcoin? So in July 2017, I've met uh, a, member, a member online on Facebook, a, member, a community member of Tickets uh, under the name uh, Alex Solo, who uh, has uh, introduced the project to me and has uh, asked me if I was willing to do some translation job for Decred. So that's... That's then when I've uh, been in contact uh, with the Decred group and I've started my reading and learning about the project. Uh, so I've learned so much about it uh, through trans translation. Uh, and also I've met great community members in chat in, uh, back then in Slack and uh, in Slack, yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah, no, I, I, I um, definitely want to be able to get into you know, your work around translation and, and some of the issues and, and um, conversation topics about that. Um, what has your experience been like as one of the first Decred advocates in the Arabic world? Um, and what has changed since, you know, 2017 when you first got involved? Okay, so for my experience working as the, the first uh, Decred advocate in the Arabic world, I can say that it wasn't very easy at first because uh, here in Morocco, there is a ban of using uh, cryptocurrencies in general. So when I when I've uh, wanted to to uh, at first in 2000 October two, 2018, when I've had the first meet Decred meetup uh, here in Morocco, uh, I've invited many people, but so many, uh, just a few people have uh, shown up. And I think that's because of the bad people were very afraid to show to a cryptocurrency meetup. But uh, after that, when they when they saw that we're, I'm not really here to tell anyone to invest or to tell anyone uh, to, uh, to give anyone any financial advices. I'm just here to represent the project, represent uh, the technology behind it. Uh, how is it? Uh, how does it work? and how we can use it. More and more people have become uh, more interested uh, in the technology and more and more people have been uh, attending our meetups and uh, events. As uh, for uh, the translation work, uh, as I told you before, I've started in the, uh, at late of uh, 2017, 
But when I wanted to start my uh, uh, translation documents and uh, decorate journal, I've uh, faced one obstacle that uh, many websites uh, don't have, don't support the bi-directional text. So I couldn't publish my, my translation's work. Uh, so here I've had the, the help of uh, one of the uh, community members of uh, Decreate DB. I want to thank him, uh, who helped me a lot to, under to understand and to work with uh, GitHub. Uh, it took me a, a long time to understand GitHub as I am not a, uh, a technical <laughs> guy, girl, but uh, Thanks to him, I am now uh, I have uh, been able to publish publish my work in uh, GitHub uh, pages. So, and uh, in the late of uh, 2018 and the, the beginning of uh, 2019, I've got uh, invited uh, to attend and speak in uh, a lot of uh, events and uh, meetups. Uh, to represent uh, the technology of blockchain, and I found it a good opportunity to represent uh, the project uh, and uh, its uh, technology, and uh, more and more people uh, have been interested. So, in my opinion, uh, it's the trust you give people, because uh, at first they didn't know me, they didn't, they didn't know the project, or anything, or anything about it, they didn't know why they should uh, be attending this uh, this events or these uh, meetups. But uh, after uh, uh, after uh, the first meetups and events, uh, they were m more curious to know more about uh, this technology and more about the projects. And we've get and we've got more questions. Uh, and I've uh, created the, some uh, social accounts in parallel, so people can uh, can ask questions and uh, know more about the project, uh, not just here in Morocco, but uh, across all the Arabic world. Because uh, with the help of uh, Abdurrahman, who is a member uh, with us uh, in the community, uh, we translate the main uh, the main articles about uh, Decred so people can uh, know more about it and learn more about it uh, as i've uh, in uh, in my opinion as i've learned a lot for free because the uh, indicate community they give you a lot of information so I've, uh, as i've learned a lot i wanted to share this knowledge and uh, share uh, these informations with the uh, other people so so they can use it and become, uh, and they can use it and uh, the world around us and the, the world, uh, especially in the third world, can change. So Absolutely. Traveling, I'm not traveling, but you've been attending a lot of events, meeting with a lot of government officials and you know people high up in the Moroccan government. What's what's been one of the most interesting slash useful things you've learned from attending all these events? Okay. Uh, so first of all, when I've been invited to this uh, to this uh, events, uh, I don't. What uh, what you should uh, do is uh, not to, is not to come uh, aggressively. You should uh, start with talking about blockchain, about what it is, and then talk about the project, what it does. And how it works, people get really excited and really interested to know more in this way. So uh, uh, at first, the, it was hard because people didn't know about what's blockchain, what's crypto. It was just a few people who, who know about it. Uh, but now more people are, uh, are willing to know more. And even in the government, there is uh, some change from 2017 when there, there was a ban until now. So, because uh, last week in uh, Morocco, uh, there was a, a, a there there was a, a there was a change that uh, that saying that there will be study of crypto the, the use of cryptocurrency and CDBC in uh, in Morocco. So, I think that's a big change. Yeah, no, absolutely. It, it seems like things are progressing um, over the last couple of years. And what are some of the like 
and people learning about Decred and starting to try to understand what this blockchain can do, what are some of the common hurdles uh, and problems that people are facing in understanding the message of Decred? Okay. So, uh, through my experience in uh, explaining Decred to people, uh, it's uh, it's the way you represent the project to everyone. So, when you talk to devs, it will be so much easier to explain the project for them. But when you when you represent the project to normal people, you need really to find simple words and uh, an easy way to explain things to them. And I think what uh, helps uh, a lot is uh, the demonstration. For example, you can uh, just uh, open the wallets and uh, show people how transactions work, how privacy work, how staking work. This way you, you attract the attention of people and they are really interested in it. And, they, and you are sure that uh, some of them will uh, download the, the wallet and they will uh, try to, to use it that way. Who are some of the main partners, companies or organizations that you've been working with? Um, during your uh, advocacy? Okay, so uh, fr from the start I was uh, working alone, but uh, there was some help of friends because when I when I do uh, an, an event or a meetup, I always integrate another subject with me. For example, big data or, uh, or uh, eco about economics. So there are some friends of, of me who helps me to uh, in those meetups. Uh, but uh, for uh, my partners, I've, we've just uh, partnered uh, in late uh, 2020 with uh, an org uh, OMG. This, it's an uh, organization uh, for uh, young decisions in Morocco. Decisions in uh, young Morocco. That's... Uh, and our partnership was about to represent blockchain technology uh, to young people so they can be interested in it. Uh, and we had, uh, and uh, through this partnership, I think that uh, more partnerships will come in the future after people will see our work in the, uh, in the real, in the, in the, in work. Yes. Um, what is the general sentiment around cryptocurrencies in the Middle East? I know you talked about the ban, but what what is what are people? How are people feeling about the technology? Are they skeptical? Are people starting to embrace it? Um, you know, what's the sort of um, antidotal boots on the ground uh, narrative, if you will? Okay. So, uh, in my opinion, despite initial hesitation to embrace the cryptocurrency, the Arab world is slowly beginning to hop on the Bitcoin, Bitcoin and the crypto trend. So, as uh, you might know, Bitcoin, along with the other cryptocurrencies, has been banned in Morocco since uh, 2017 amid concerns about uh, the security risk of uh, using hidden payments systems and despite the ban morocco is among the four african countries in the world where bitcoin and crypto are traded the most trailing only nigeria south africa and uh, kenya and uh, and the data ranks morocco uh, the data from uh, local bitcoin ranks morocco the 36th in the world by bitcoin trading activity and the top trader in north africa in the other hand, uh, in the United Arab Emirates, it's a country where uh, it's, ra it's rated the, the top 20 traders of Bitcoin in the world. Uh, and Dubai now hosts uh, to over 20 crypto companies and has uh, become one of the world's fastest, fastest growing international hubs for the trading of uh, cryptocurrencies. And earlier this year, many universities here in Morocco and in Egypt have uh, begun offering uh, courses about b uh, blockchain and cryptocurrencies due to the overwhelming students' interests. 
even in uh, Saudi Arabia, there is a, a great adoption of cryptocurrencies. Uh, despite uh, the ban of, uh, I think in uh, Saudi Arabia, the, the, the trading of Bitcoin and the other cryptocurrencies is legal. There is just the ban of uh, financial uh, institutions of uh, trading uh, Bitcoin and uh, other cryptocurrencies. Uh, however, in, um, in general, Bitcoin and crypto traders in Arab words uh, uh, are hopeful that Arabic countries' uh, crypto policy may, may change because, uh, in my opinion, uh, cryptocurrencies and uh, blockchain are a, techno are a very great uh, revolu uh, technology revolution that is taking pl place now and uh, we must uh, follow it and hop on this train before it's too late for us. So, yes, I, I completely agree. And would you say that governments are receptive or adversarial to cryptocurrencies in general in the Middle East? Yes. Uh, so in the Middle East, uh, there are uh, governments like uh, in uh, Emirates, Kuwait are very receptive of uh, the use of cryptocurrencies and uh, and uh, blockchain technology because uh, they they saw what uh, this technology have uh, done and uh, they are really receptive of it. Uh, I think also in Arab uh, Saudi Arabia, uh, the ban is uh, just here in Morocco, uh, Algeria, and uh, I think uh, also Egypt. Although many people here, although the band, they are uh, still using the cryptocurrencies and uh, and Bitcoin. Do do they do so in fear or do they do so just kind of you know they're not very afraid? The who oh, the the traders? Yes. Yes. <laughs> no, they they are doing the, do, doing so because they want. To, uh, I think that they want financial freedom. Uh, yes, uh, because uh, there is uh, little jobs uh, year by year, so people are uh, looking for solutions to get money to to have their financial freedom and to be uh, to be more independent. Yes. We've already named a few of these just in our conversation, but what are some of the biggest challenges for cryptocurrency adoption in the Middle East? You know, cultural, infrastructure, education. Um, what's keeping cryptocurrency and decred from being everywhere? From being everywhere. Okay. So, <laughs> uh, as I said, as I said before, uh, despite the ban of uh, using of the using the cryptocurrency and Bitcoin and decred uh, in uh, the Arabic uh, world. Uh, more people are using it uh, day by day. Uh, you, uh, by statistics, you can see that uh, people are using it. Uh, they they don't fear uh, anything anymore, so they're just using it. Uh, Would you say that it's younger people who are using it, or is it older people? Um, do you have any sense of the demographics? Yes, uh, I can say that uh, the young people from the events and the meetups I've, uh, I've held, I've met uh, many, many young people who are uh, excited and uh, willing uh, to trade uh, Bitcoin and uh, crypto, uh, Decred and uh, other cryptocurrencies. Uh, for uh, the, the medium uh, generation from 34 to 55, uh, I think that uh, this, uh, this generation have the the meaning to invest into crypto but uh, it just they just have to be educated about it because they don't know about it they don't know about crypto they don't know anything about blockchain so they are just uh, if we can educate these people about uh, blockchain and uh, cryptocurrency i think that uh, they, they will be willing to invest in it because it's uh, really a great technology how can Decred work to attract Generation Z, uh, the younger generation? What what can Decred do to make 
itself more attractive to the young, to the youth? Okay. For DCRED, I think that uh, the community members of DCRED are doing a great job uh, great job explaining DCRED through articles and videos. You can uh, find the videos about DCRED and, uh, and articles in, on media. It's just uh, the engagement. Uh, the engagement, there is uh, little engagement uh, on these videos or uh, on, on those articles. So I think when there will be more engagement from the community members, more people will uh, see those videos, more people will be able to see, to read these articles. And so that's more people will uh, be able to know about Decred and, uh, and, use, and use it in the future. So that's it. I think it's uh, just a matter of engagements. For sure. For uh, part of uh, your proposal that recently passed and it passed with very high approval from the stakeholders, um, you, you talked about, or part of what you focused on in your proposal is translating um, work from English to Arabic for people to natively read about Decred. Why is it important um, to explain Decred to people in their own language? Okay. Uh, you know, in Morocco, we speak uh, Arabic and we speak French. Little people speak English, so uh, it's also the case for Algeria, uh, Tunisia, all the Algeria and Libya, other countries in the Middle East. I think they speak English, but uh, here in Morocco, Algeria, and Tunisia, most people speak uh, speak only French or Arabic. So translating these uh, documents. Uh, into Arabic will help people to understand better Decred. What is what is it? Because uh, most of people, when they see an English uh, article, they will just uh, close it. Because uh, in their mind, even if they understand some of the English, they will say, "Oh no, it's uh, just it will be just too much complicated for me to understand," and they will close the article before even reading it. So, by translating the uh, these articles and the uh, Decred journal, I think that more people will be willing to read uh, about uh, Decred in uh, Arabic. And uh, we use uh, uh, the standard, I use the standard Arabic. So all uh, the Arabic uh, countries in uh, the region of MENA can understand because uh, each country has, uh, has its own uh, sort of uh, Arabic. Uh, but there is a literature standard for all of us. So I use this uh, uh, literature standard so people can understand uh, much more these articles. What has been your experience working as a contractor for the DAO? What's been the most surprising thing? What's been maybe the coolest thing? Um, just kind of talk to people about working for the DAO. Oh, yeah. So for uh, until now, my experience uh, working as a contractor for a DAO has been really, really, really good. I consider myself really lucky to work with the Decred Group because uh, uh, this experience has uh, has really changed my life. Uh, I've met really great people uh, who helped me a lot when uh, when i knew little about this technology uh, people in decred will uh, answer your questions no matter how uh, stupid you think they are there is uh, no bad question in the uh, decred community everyone will help you and everyone will answer your questions uh, in other hand uh, working as a contractor has helped me uh, in my real life uh, I've, I, I work only in my free time, so I have time to take care of my daughter, to continue to, to continue my studies and uh, to do my uh, daily tasks. Uh, I really uh, and it gives me uh, more independence. I feel more independent and more confidence in myself because uh, in Decred, I they I think that nobody 
care about if you are a woman or a man, of uh, you are younger or uh, or old, they just care about the results of your work, the co the quality of your work, and people will they they will encourage you to work and uh, to give the most uh, you can give, uh, and that's what uh, pushes me to work uh, even harder and to give more to the community and to the projects. I couldn't agree more as a, a new contractor. Um, you know, like you said, the, the ability to be able to attend school, take care of your family, the flexibility, um, and just the quality of people that you work with. I mean, you know, I'm in Oklahoma, you're in Morocco, and, and here we are we're <laughs> coordinating, working together. So okay, yeah. I, I, I think it's really amazing just the future of work. Um, what motivates you to work for Decred? Uh, why did you pick Decred over the thousands of other projects out there? Okay, uh, so my main motivation for working for Decred Group, I can say that it's because uh, it's a governance system. It's a governance system is what, uh, what attracts me at first. When I was uh, when I was searching and uh, reading about the project, so before I knowing about about the project, I've been uh, reading about uh, good governance and decentralized uh, decentralization. But in uh, Decred, you get to see that in work, you can uh, you can j just simply vote uh, for a ye for ye by yes or no for a proposal to pass, or for a or a, for a code change to pass or not. Uh, every, every every vote and every person matters in uh, in decred group and uh, in in on decred community. So that's what uh, really motivates me the most uh, working with decred till now. It's it's a governance system. What are some of the areas of improvement for decred, and what uh, changes would you like to see? Um, and how might these changes help your work? Okay, so for Decred, Decred Group has uh, many futures that are awesome, and uh, many many skilled uh, devs working to improve uh, the projects day by day. Uh, so the changes that I want to, to see in the, in the Decred project, it's uh, the awareness of the projects. I want that uh, more people can know more about the project and, uh, and uh, be educated about it and, uh, used, uh, and use Decred. So, uh, so it's uh, as I said before, it's about uh, engagement. I want that more people in the community because I know that from 2017 when I've uh, uh, when I first uh, know the project till now, many members have uh, uh, have uh, have been with the project, and uh, I want them to simply engage with uh, everything related to Decred. And I want them to engage on Twitter and on uh, YouTube. So, uh, because there is algorithms that help when there is engagement, there's algorithms that helps the project to be known wide, uh, widespread in the world. Uh, and I think that with perseverance and uh, with good work, uh, Decred projects will be known in the, in the future. In the, yeah, I think that's a great answer. Um, we definitely need as much engagement as possible. And that's you know, obviously a conversation that's been happening in the Decred community. Why is there not more women in crypto? And how can we attract more female contractors to Decred? Okay. I think it's uh, because of, uh, it's a question of uh, culture. So many women, women studies economics or uh, or marketing and don't study just science or uh, technology. And that's why we find uh, more men in computer engineering and more women in economics and marketing fields. Uh, I believe that we should uh, encourage women to study more and more technology and science 
uh, and uh, to give them uh, to encourage and to to encourage the more female speakers to take up places in uh, conferences panels and uh, work on uncovering any unconscious biases so so for for i think that uh, both men and women should uh, stick together encourage each other and offer each other opportunities i think that's the way for for more women to uh, to come into the crypto world and uh, into the cred. i've been uh, as for my case i've been encouraged a lot by my husband my by alex alex solo back in 2017 and by all the community members of the Decred group i've been really encouraged that's why i am still here with the project till 2021 and i think uh, that's a great example to share that's a yeah yeah no i i couldn't agree more just the quality of the brains that Decred attracts in terms of intellectual capacity. And, and these people are just so willing to share their time and share their knowledge. It, it truly is um, em empowering. And, and, and like you said, um, we need to work together to bring more females um, and, and all sorts of diversity that is necessary to continue to grow Decred. Um, how does cryptocurrency empower women in Middle Eastern countries in particular, but around the world? in general okay in general yes cryptocurrency uh, empower women in uh, in arabic world in general and uh, around the world by giving them independence and uh, and freedom because uh, you know that uh, who are the most com uh, 80 percent of the consumers are women so uh, we should really encourage them to use cryptocurrencies because uh, the men will uh, most of the men will only store cryptocurrencies or uh, or uh, money but women are the consumers they, they they want to buy online they want to to fly more they want to go on vacancies more so we really should encourage them uh, so in my country, I don't think there is much uh, uh, women who, women who use uh, cryptocurrency. There is just a little number. I th I think that 90 percent are men and ten percent are uh, women. I can s I can say the same thing for our, for the Arabic world, uh, and for all the world. I can say that there is eighty percent eighty. 20%, 80% men and 20% uh, uh, women who actually use the cryptocurrencies. So we should really, I think uh, that uh, by education, we should uh, really uh, make strategies to, uh, to get to these women, to educate them about blockchain and cryptocurrencies. And by the time they will uh, start using them. Using them. When you look at Decred now and you think about Decred in 10 years, what is your number one aspiration for the project? Okay, so uh, I think that Decred has has and uh, has been always uh, been uh, able to to give us more more features in the uh, in terms of technology we can see now from 2016 to now there is privacy there is decentralized treasury there is a lot of uh, great features in decred and i think if we educate uh, people about it about these futures these futures we can use them in uh, real life applications so in my field of study we can use uh, the timestamp as it was used in Brazil, in uh, sorry, in the uh, in the renewable energies, because uh, if you might have heard of uh, smart grids, so people are now are using smart grids, smart grids to to trade electricity between them. So we can use uh, atomic swaps and uh, and uh, sort the data using the timestamps that will be really great 
and will really help uh, the the project to to be more now in the future that's just one example <laughs> that i've got in my head no i i think that that was a great example um thank you We've, we've actually run through all of the questions that I had pre-planned, but this is a great segue to segue into some of the community questions. And one other question that I thought of while you were talking, um, now that I've learned, you know, you're pursuing a PhD in renewables. What are your thoughts about um, the use of renewable energy um, for decred mining and, you know, Bitcoin mining? Um, what there's been a lot of conversations about this, and I'm interested to hear what your thoughts about uh, that conversation is. Okay, so I think uh, mining uh, decred or Bitcoin using the renewable energies will be really great because we have free energies everywhere. We have solar energy that's free. We have wind energy that's free. Even farmers, they have uh, biomass energy that's uh, that just goes to waste. So if we use these energies, we can use them in electricity uh, and we can use them to mine uh, Bitcoin or Antikred. Uh, uh, as I said, there is, a, there is, a, there is al already uh, researchers about uh, using smart grids in uh, mining Bitcoin and, the, and the other cryptocurrencies. So we can use the smart grid for electricity and the rest of the electricity that is not used, we can use it to mine Bitcoin and other, uh, other cryptocurrencies that we can uh, share between the smart grid, uh, smart grid users as a, as a compensation for them. So. Yeah, I, I really like that answer. Um, this is a question from the audience. For those of you who are listening on the playback, make sure next time you tune in to Decred In-Depth Live if you want to be able to ask a question live to our guest. Um, the question comes from Darth Crypto. He asks, is it true that Islam forbids currencies that are not backed by gold or is this false information? Yes. It's not uh, Islam, it's just some, we said there are muftis. Uh, there is uh, different opinions about it because some of them say that even fiat money is volatile. So, uh, so Bitcoin and uh, other cryptocurrencies uh, are halal and others say no, it's not as the, he said, it's not just uh, the cryptocurrencies are not backed by uh, gold, so it's not halal. But, but I, in my opinion, as uh, as long as we don't use cryptocurrencies in bad things, it's uh, it's halal. That's uh, my opinion. Just uh, not use them. Use when you use anything in the right way, and uh, and for the good, it's uh, it's. It's uh, no one can tell you it's uh, it's forbidden. Thank you. Um, I have uh, I want to just put out a shout out. Thank you, Elian Huesca, for uh, he sends regards to us from Mexico. One more question <laughs> from Darth Crypto. He asked, are authorities actively looking for people who use crypto and then try to confiscate the funds and punish the people? Or are they just banning exchanges to keep the majority away from crypto? So here in Morocco, there is a ban, but you can use crypto. You can trade crypto, but you can't do publicity about exchanges. About You can't tell people to buy or sell crypto. You can't uh, tell people online or have, a, or, or have a meeting telling people uh, you, you should buy this and you, or you should sell this. You can use it for your own good and uh, don't do publicity about it. I, I think that makes a lot of sense. I, um, <laughs> yes. Do you have any questions for, for me or anything that I didn't ask that I should have asked? Actually, I don't. Okay. Yeah, don't. no, that's perfectly okay. fine. I, um, I want to thank you for your time in SAF. Um, I know that the community greatly appreciates um, hearing from you. Um, Thank you. The work Thank you're you doing. Thank you too for inviting. 
Yeah, thank you so for inviting me. It's, I'm very pleased, really, yes, and we're... really excited to be here. It, it's truly an honor, and I'm, I'm very um, excited about the work you're doing in Morocco and in the Middle East and Arabic world in general. Um, I look forward to hopefully having conversations with you in the future. And Me too. Me yeah. too. I can't wait to have a, another conversation with you in the future. Absolutely. Uh, thank you for your time. And, uh, Thank you too. Yes, everyone, um, all the Decred stakeholders, community members out there, make sure you like, share. Um, I will put Insaf's Twitter information um, and also a link to Decred Arabia in the chat. So make sure you guys, or to the YouTube channel, Decred Arabia. And that way you guys can subscribe to Decred Arabia. And whenever you see the videos, like, share, engage, comment. Even if it's not in Arabic, you can you know engage in English and it still will help yes. the algorithms. Yes, it will. Thank you so much for uh, for inviting me, and uh, I've I've, uh, I've had a very gr great time with you. Conversation. Same. Take care, Insaf. Take care. Thank you. Bye.